Hello and welcome. My name is Tarmo Rommel and I'm bringing you a short tutorial today on making map layouts in QGIS, specifically on learning how to add grids or graticules to your map layout. So let's begin. I have a blank version of QGIS above me. It might look a little bit different depending on how you have things set up, but in generally this is what you get when you launch QGIS. I'm currently doing this tutorial in Macintosh, but it's the same thing if we were to do this on any other platform. Let's, uh, let's start by bringing in some data, shall we? I have a digital aerial photograph. It's in .tiff format. I'm just going to drag that over and drop it over here into the layers menu over my, uh, over my shoulder. And sometimes it'll show it to you with the individual bands separated out. Sometimes it'll just say air photo. Uh, it doesn't really matter for the purposes of today's tutorial, but the data set should open and you should be able to see it in the viewer here. You can always use the zoom in and zoom out and pan around buttons on the top of your toolbar. You can use the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and zoom out and to look at your data. You can also use your left mouse button and drag the image around the screen so that you can look at whatever aspects of it you would like. If you want to know more about this data set, you can always head over to the layers uh, window here, right click on the data set and head down to the bottom here behind my shoulder and click on properties. And it will bring up a window, let me bring it onto the screen here, that will give you some background information about the data set. Specifically, it will tell you its size, it will tell you um, information about where it came from, but it will also tell you information about the map projection. So the map projection is currently in NAT83, UTM or Universal Transverse Mercator, Zone 17N, and it's in meters. That's really great to know because we're going to create a UTM grid on our map output, but then we're also going to produce a graticule of latitude and longitude lines, which uh, allows you to have spatial reference attached to the maps that you produce. The other thing that we notice here is this code, which is listed as EPSG 26,917. And you might not know what this code means, it's an acronym for European Petroleum Survey Group, and what they've done is they've added unique codes for various combinations of map projection parameters so that it becomes very easy to refer to them and to enter them into your GIS environment rather than having to sort of enter all of the various parameterizations. So we're going to use this to create the UTM grid. We're going to use uh, EPSG 4326 to create a graticule on our map. So without any further ado, I'm just going to click OK and close this window and we're going to get started. The first thing we need to do is head over here. Usually it's next to the save button. There's a button called new print layout. We're going to go ahead and left click on there and it's going to ask us for a layout name. You can put in something very meaningful you, to you, but I'm going to simply type in demo because I'm providing a demo. And click OK. It opens up a new window for doing this map layout. It currently doesn't align very nicely with what I have below it. That makes it funny on the video. So give me one second. I'm just going to reposition my windows so that they look nice and that you can follow along nicely with them on the screen. So the QGIS project is in the background and a new window opened on top of it. It's named after what we just called it. And basically we have a blank canvas. We have a blank sheet of paper on which we can produce our map composition. Now, usually if we're gonna make a map composition, we need some map data. So we can head over to the left margin here. There's a button that looks like a little scroll of white paper with a little plus sign on it. And if you hover over top of it, it will say add map. And if we click on there, it'll allow us to come onto this sheet of paper and create a frame or a box that will contain our map data. So I'm just going to create something like this. We can always resize it and position it uh, as we would like as we build our map composition. 
we can click on this uh, select move item button and that will allow us to adjust the handles and change the size of the box that contains our map or we can click on the button just below it which allows us to move the content around inside the frame. So we have full control over how we position our geographic data but the thing is that Right now, this air photo tile is quite small and it doesn't fill my frame and it really doesn't show me the detail that we might want in our map composition. So with the map frame currently selected, and if it's not, if we click off to the side, we can always select the map frame again or we can select it over here in the items list. Either way, once it's selected, we should see the box around it, we should see the handles, it will bring up a series of menu items down here on the right hand bottom corner of our window. There's a layout tab, an items properties tab, and a guides tab. It's the item properties that I want to bring your attention to. Here, the first thing that we can do is set the scale of our map. And it's currently set to some weird random value that it positioned on the on the screen but we can go in here and we can change this to let's say 10,000 and it changes the scale of what we see on the map this might not be ideal uh, let's go in and change this to 20,000 okay and it's maybe not this parking lot that we're interested in so we can go back to this move button and we can reposition the map inside the map frame. And we can choose an area of campus that we want to show. Now obviously we can play around with the scale and we can play around with the positioning to highlight exactly the areas that we're interested in. Did I say 20,000? I typed in 2,000. Let me put in 10,000 instead of 1000 and notice that now we're seeing much more of the map area and we can still move things around but it doesn't really look all that great I'm going to put in 15,000 not good enough go back to 10,000 that looks pretty decent we can Ensure that we slide it off the edge. Maybe that's still not showing me enough detail. Maybe I want to go to 8,000. And now we have something that fills my map frame nicely and it captures campus, but no, captures all this stuff off to the side. But we can adjust the size of our map frame and play around with the scale so that we're actually showing and focusing the area of the map that we're most interested in. So some of this is playing around, trial and error, trying to get something that is effective and something that is going to focus on the area that your map is actually interested in portraying. So it's, it's getting there. Okay, this looks pretty decent and we're going to say we're happy with this. We can also head over here and select things like add a scale bar and we can then draw those on the screen and we can change on the item properties the units and the measurements and how many divisions we might want on here. We can take this and we can move it around on the screen and position it where we'd like it to be positioned. We can add things like north arrows we put a north arrow on here and we can choose all kinds of styles and formats for them. We can resize them and again we can position them where we feel that the map composition makes the most sense. We can add all kinds of lines and boxes and squares and make this look like a really nice map composition and add text and I am going to allow you to explore those features on your own because they're relatively straightforward. Uh, and once you're done, you can always save your map composition, but then you can add up here to print. You can export it as an image. We can save it as a uh, SVG format 
or as a PDF format file. And depending on your setup, you might have other options available here for you as well. But you can then export this map and then bring it into whatever document or project you're working in. But let's get to the grids and the graticules because this is the most exciting part. So we're going to select this element, which is going to bring up the item properties for the map, not for the north arrow, not for the scale bar, but for the map. We already see the scale. We could rotate our map here if we wanted to, if we had a shape that would fit on the page better rotated, let's say 45 degrees, um, we could do that, but I don't want to do that in this case here, but we have the ability to rotate and adjust things on the map. And then we could also link the north arrow to that so that always things look proper. But what I want to do is scroll down here to this option which says grids and we're going to click on the little triangle next to it it's going to expand the options for us and we're going to click on the green plus sign to add a new grid to our map layout nothing happened because we haven't told it to do anything yet so let's head over here to the modify grid button and now we start to tinker with what we want it to look like so where you choose the CRS, which is the map projection information, and it's currently telling it to use whatever is in the map, but I want to force it to be this NAT83 UTM Zone 17 North, so EP, e, EPSG, uh, whatever it was, 26,917. We then need to decide on the interval. How often are we going to draw a sort of easting and a northing line on this graph. And currently they're set to zero, that's why we're seeing no lines. So we can go in here and say, well, let's put in a line every 100 meters. And now we have a measured grid over top of our image. Just as if we went to an NTS map sheet and we saw those faint blue lines, one kilometer by one kilometer, uh, this is a grid of 100 meters by 100 meters overlain on this surface. This might be too busy. We could go in and change these numbers to be maybe 200 and 200. And we have fewer of those lines. Maybe that's something that we would like to do, but we have the ability to adjust and control them. So it's one thing to see the lines but we also want the coordinates so that we can use this as an actual map. So what we need to do is scroll down just a little bit further and we can start by adding in a frame. I like to choose zebra because it does this nice alternating white and black lines, which makes it very easy to see where one cell or one line begins and the other ends. Although the zebra boxes may be a little bit thick, we can adjust the frame size here we can make it thinner, we can make it thicker. That looks pretty primary school, but if we go to something thin, it doesn't detract from the map, but it gives us the spatial reference, makes it easier to measure those things. And of course, we can play around with all kinds of things like the inner margins of the map. We can play around with the coloring of lines and the fills. Um, but that's relatively simple. You click on it, you slide things around, choose the color you want, and the white and the black and the lines and the fills will all adjust accordingly. Generally black and white, pretty standard uh, for this kind of thing. So we have our frame. The next thing that we want to do is check on this draw coordinates button. And you'll notice that it's now added a bunch of numbers onto our map. And they look like UTM coordinates, and that's great. The numbers are in the range that we would expect for something in sort of the region that Kiel campus for York University is located in. So everything looks correct here, only that what we have is all kinds of additional fractional elements that are way too precise for the scale of mapping that we're doing. So we can take this coordinate precision, which is currently set to three decimal places, and we can set it to zero. And it gets rid of the decimal component. Makes it a little bit easier to look at. The other thing that we want to do is ensure that 
we don't have values all the way around the map. It looks a little bit busy having it on the top and on the left. And if we remove those and keep the numbers only on the right and the bottom of our map, we can move that map a little bit more into the corner and save some space. So we can actually go and say on the left side, we want to disable the legend entries and we want to disable them on the top. So now we just have them on the bottom and on the right. It gives us still enough information for getting the coordinates, but they look a little bit cramped into the frame. So we can scroll down a little bit farther and we can look at this distance to map frame and we can increase those numbers just to push the values a little bit away from the edge of the map. And now we have easting and northing coordinates attached to grids with a nice zebra frame with the map data on board. Really, really great. But what if we don't want a UTM grid, but we want a Graticule? Well, all we need to do is go change the spatial reference. We scroll back up here where we had this CRS. We're going to choose um, EPSG 4326. And it's going to remove our UTM lines and it's going to try to draw latitude and longitude lines. So latitude being our parallels and longitude being our meridians. But notice that the spacing is currently still set to 200, which means it's not drawing a meridian or a parallel um, for every 200 degrees, which is way, way larger than the area that we're observing. So we need to change this interval to something that is going to work on the scale of mapping that we have. So let's say 005. So now we have some meridians and we have some parallels and we have values along the margins. We still have the zebra frame because we set that before. We still have values only along the bottom and the right-hand side. It looks pretty good. But the problem is that these values are only giving us the degree. They're not telling us anything about further precision. So we can adjust that too. And if we scroll back down to where we're talking about the coordinates, rather than having data provided only in decimal format, what if we went to degrees, minutes, seconds? We click on there and all of a sudden we have data formatted the way that we would expect. 43 degrees, 46 minutes, 30 seconds. 43 degrees, 46 minutes, 12 seconds. These are positive, so they're north. These are negative, so they're west. But we could go here and we could choose with suffix and it puts a north and a w next to the coordinate so it's really obvious what we're looking at. So we have the ability to change the format of the border or the frame of our map. We can play around with the positioning of the map data itself. We can then position the coordinates and move them and color them and adjust them and change the units by which they're displayed so that we have spatial reference on our maps and then add all of the map elements, add titles and, and fill it all in really nicely. Maybe put a neat line around the outside, create some divisions with boxes on the screen to make it look really presentable as a map. And then click up here and save a copy, maybe as a PDF and off we go. And there you have it, map layouts with grids and graticules in QGIS, super simple, drag, drop, and make a few selections, and you're on your way. So until next time, make some map layouts. Talk to you soon.